From the Empire State to the Golden Gates, this is Quad Radio USA. Now, with all the dirt from the world of ATV motocross and GNCC racing, here's Mr. Ten Seconds. Rodney Tomlin. Once again, we get set to roll into the Mountaineer GNCC. Kind of a, a pre-race warm-up, if you will, and a mid-season report on some of our riders as uh, this weekend rolls on. And, the, uh, of course, want to say thanks to, uh, first and foremost, this guy right here who's with me, Mr. Uh, Gabraham Phillips. It's, uh, you shave the beard, man. You shave the beard. But we'll talk about that in just a moment. I just want to say thanks to our friends over at uh, Tire Balls, your flat-proof tire inflation system. Be sure and check those guys out and uh, pick up. Uh, the uh, tire balls for 10% off uh, for new customers if you mention uh, Quad Radio on there. That also goes for ATV motocrossers. Sam D- uh, Stan Digby, uh, Big Daddy, he takes care of tire balls over at the AMA ATV motocross. So if you guys are looking for tire balls over there, talk to Stan, mention Quad Radio, and you'll get a 10% discount. This guy right here, talk about getting discounts. He got a big discount this year because uh, at the early part of the year, everything started out pretty good, but he also had some rough bumps out there. Gabe Phillips, welcome to uh, Quad Radio. I know this uh, uh, XC2 Pro-Am class. We talked about it coming into the uh, season. It's probably uh, one of the deepest fields there is out there to go out there and try to uh, win in, let alone try to win a championship in. Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's it's been a tough year. Um, I've dug myself a pretty deep hole, and uh, I'm starting to get myself out of it. I'm three points out of the championship right now, so uh, I don't know. Hopefully tomorrow goes good, and get another win. Well, let's talk about this whole, how did, how did it all happen? Let's, I mean, we're at the halfway point right now, basically in the middle part of the season. Well, let's stack it up, man. I mean, where did it, where did it all start going right? When did this all start going wrong? Um, Florida we didn't go the way I wanted it, uh, the way I wanted it to. Uh, went, ended real fast. Um, then Georgia, I came out, I got a win at Georgia, finished second at North Carolina. Uh, then I got back with an old sponsor from last year, Greg's ATV, out of Coshocton, Ohio, and I'm winning now, so. <laughs> That's funny, right, there, how, you, how you put that up. But I remember even uh, the, your first uh, win back whenever, uh, what was it, two races ago, I think it was uh, the Mammoth, right? Yeah. And I can remember, I think that was one of the first things you said whenever you got on the podium. And, uh, I mean, you, it seemed like it was a big sigh of relief for you to be able to get back with that team. Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, the bike's where it was at the end of last year and where I was comfortable on the bike. I mean, I wasn't comfortable with the beginning of the year, so... Uh uh, everything's good, and uh, just going to try to go get a win tomorrow. That's great. Now let's talk about uh, some things. Uh, over the winter, uh, we were talking with you, and you were being billed as you know the guy, the, the next big thing in the uh, XC2 Pro Am class. You were the guy, you know, that everybody was going to have to beat you basically to win the championship this year in the XC2 Pro Am class. And uh, obviously, uh, you're you're making that apparent now that you should be the guy that's up there, or at least one of the guys and are one of the guys up there vying for championship points and, and the championship itself. But, man, I mean, uh, a lot of things going on. Let's let's back up and think about whenever we first talked back in when it was. In January, late January, early February, I think you and I talked, and everybody was like, Gabe Phillips, Gabe Phillips. I mean, this winner's program was probably, if, if, if I'm not mistaken, probably one of the strictest programs you've had leading into a year. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was down at Florida with Chris Bethel. We got a house down there, and we were riding almost every day. Uh, we was riding quad dirt bikes, and it was just... I don't know. It was tough to take there at the beginning whenever I DNF'd, and uh, I don't know. So um, now that you look back on it, I mean, I know you right now barely even have words on it, but, I mean, what's your feelings about it? I mean, uh, halfway point, three points out of the championship. Finish races right now is what I'm going for. Uh, Try to leave out here with a win because it's the hometown crowd, and... That's about all I can do. And there's another point. I mean, how close really are you to home right now? Uh, about 20, 25 minutes from home. You, you're kidding me. No. That's, I'm staying over in Morgantown. That's closer than I think I can't make it here in 25 minutes right now. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a hometown race. There's going to be a lot of friends and family here, and I just want to go out and do good for them because they come and support me at everywhere. So, I mean, I just got to do my best. and. 
What's been going on lately? Uh, I understand you did some pretty cool stuff this past week with some media stuff, right? Uh, yeah, uh, Thursday I got volunteered to go to a couple schools in uh, Tucker County in West Virginia here. And um, I talked to them about a lot of like safety stuff and uh, took helmets and my bike and everything. The kids really enjoyed the bike park because they let me go out and ride the track or go out and ride in the, uh, the playgrounds and let, ripped up their playgrounds and everything. The kids really enjoyed that. And, uh, I mean, I was just going just to tell them if they work hard at stuff. I mean, they can get where they want to be. And I told them where I started at and where I'm at now. And a lot of people couldn't believe it. And it was just, it was good for me to go out and do it. And I really enjoyed doing it. Uh, exactly where are you now? Well, I mean, uh, do you, do you, are you, uh, there's a lot of these guys out here that have to work 40-plus hour job a week and, and come out here and try to race and everything. Are you one of the guys that have the luxuries of not having a full-time job? Or do you have a part-time job? Or is racing your job? Uh, right now, racing is kind of my job. Um, I do stuff around the house. My mom owns her own uh, clinic and everything. And I you a doctor? Uh, yeah. Seriously? Uh, she's a nurse practitioner. Oh, well, same thing as a doctor. I mean, uh, they help me as much as a doctor. Well, that, that's pretty cool. So basically, uh, you, you, you're like the man of the house. I mean, you're like the, the yard boy, so to speak, the, the gardener. Yeah, I'm, I'm the... Pedro? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, between me and my dad, I mean, we do a lot... Uh, a lot out there for her and everything and I mean she does everything else for us so I can't thank her enough and my dad enough so that's pretty good that's that's a pretty unique situation you're in I mean there's a handful of people that have that opportunity and obviously she believes in what you're doing out here right uh yeah she backs me 199 percent she's every day on me see what I'm doing every day she asks me what I eat she makes my dinner and it's just I mean she's all for it for me to do this so I mean she pushes me so I want to give her the best I can that's awesome to have that kind of support and you got any brothers or sisters uh yeah I got a brother he isn't going to be here this weekend but he wishes he was here he's really not in a happy mood where he's at right now but uh I mean he's don't tell me he just got married <laughs> no he's been married he's actually on vacation at the beach oh and, and he's not in a very good mood being at because he knows brothers racing at home right yeah he knows it's a hometown track and uh he just rather would be here helping me and because he wants to see me do good i mean he pushes me just as hard as my mom does and i want to give him results just like i do my parents so there you go man that's good that you want to give back to those folks and and not only that it feels good to win right yeah definitely <laughs> all right buddy i'm gonna let you go right now but uh, good luck to you it's a big weekend uh, a lot of uh, like you said friends and family out here and about and uh, hopefully uh, maybe we'll get to see you on the podium again this week but uh, I just gotta know man what happened to the Gabraham beard man uh, did me saying something and writing about it that make you ch shave it no I mean I really like it uh, I don't know just my facial hair just grows so fast and it's just I don't know it's a pain to keep up with and you may have it tomorrow who knows right uh, I probably have it by Monday <laughs> that's pretty wild <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great, dude. Good talking to you, and uh, we'll, we'll uh, see you, uh, I'm sure, tomorrow maybe. But uh, for those of you out there in Quad Radio land, be sure and uh, check in with us uh, more as uh, Quad Radio will uh, continue to give you hopefully more and uh, insightful interviews with uh, our up-and-coming ATV racers from around the ATV racing world. Gabe Phillips, thanks again for being on Quad Radio. All right, thank you. That's Gabe Phillips. I'm Rodney Tomlin. This is Quad Radio.